So, Diana. The character you'll be receiving for free in patch 1.5. I'd say who's a better person to make a Diano how to play guide than me? Who has this fucking oh, dumbass meme spread around with Diano just because I have this one emote that looks it looks really beautiful, right? And fits her a lot, so let's go ahead and start with the Diano guide. Don't build DPS Diano. Don't... Don't do it. Diano's normal attack. Her ratios are alright, it doesn't do too much damage, but the main reason you're using Diano anyway is for her E, Icy Pulse. This ability, if you press or hold E, it generates some Icy Pulse that auto-targets to the enemy. Each paw that hits the enemy will increase the duration of her barrier, and each paw that hits the enemy will generate energy. Um, from what I said, each paw that hit the enemy will extend the barrier duration is kinda false because you don't have to actually hit an enemy. You can hit a wall, a terrain, you can hit anything. As long as like it collides with a terrain or well, an object, uh, the barrier duration will uh, be added. It will not generate energy if it hits a wall or terrain however. The Ona barrier, holding E will obviously give you a bigger barrier because more damage absorption. And her barrier also has the innate uh, passive of 250% uh, cryo damage absorption. Which gives you almost invulnerability to cryo damage when you have her barrier. But in her barrier it will be weaker to pyro damage because obviously that will melt the barrier. With level 12 skills, her current barrier is 14.4 uh, max health plus 1773, and the duration is 2.4 seconds per clone. The, uh, the press E cooldown is 6 seconds, the hold E cooldown is 15. If you hold E, your barrier will last 12 seconds. If you press E, your barrier will last 4.8 seconds. And her ult. Her ult is essentially she throws a field down which uh, damages enemy and heal ally within that radius. The healing and the damage ticks at the same time and it ticks roughly around every 2 seconds or so. It's a decent way of applying elemental to the enemy if you really need to proc reactions. But to me it's only really useful for one particular hit like one big hit. This is kind of inconsistent to keep track of all the damage ticks on the field. The healing is she heals a a decent amount it's not too much but her healing is a decent amount her damage the field damage is barely anything because you're not really building Diano on damage anyway the duration of this field is 12 seconds and it has a 20 second cooldown with an 80 energy cost so there's one more reason and another big reason why people compare Diano to Bennett is because of her constellation 6 and um, let's start with the biggest constellation where people think it's necessary for Diano which I would disagree because this is really it's a good addition but you're not gonna live or die for 200 elemental mastery unless you're a youtuber and you're trying to make one shot content you know to farm internet reactions but you know other than that for Diano uh with her c6 her ult ability will apply a buff to your ally if they're above or below 50% health if they're above 50% health they gain 200 elemental mastery if they're below 50% health they gain 30% increased healing. Kind of a cool mechanic where if you're above or below certain health, you get a damage boost. And if you're below, you gain more healing. Bennett ult is innately the same function. If you're below 70%, it will heal you. If you're above 70%, it will give you an attack buff. Which is solved by his uh, constellation 1. That just gives you the attack buff regardless of your health. So I brought up that comparison because there's uh, one thing that people don't know about. Or it's not really told. You don't actually have to stay within the field to get the buff because Bennett and Diona, how their attack buff works is every time the ult ticks, so every time the healing ticks or the damage ticks, you get a lingering buff that lasts for around 2 to 3 seconds. So you don't necessarily have to stay within the field to get the maximum bonus. Hence why Bennett can actually attack buff you forever. Even though his cooldown is 12 and his, uh, no, his cooldown is 15 and his duration is 12. Bennett can actually attack buff you forever because how the buff works, it's a lingering buff. You don't actually have to stay within the field. That's the explanation on the C6, which is the main comparison with Bennett. Now then, let's go over her other constellation. Her C1 regenerates 15 energy for the owner after the duration of her signature mix end. So after you use your ult, you get uh, 15 energy back. This is 15 flat energy, it does not scale with energy recharge. 
Essentially, it reduces her old cost to 65. T2! I really like this. Except the first part. The first part, increase IC Paul damage by 15%. They're, tr they're really trying to advocate building Diano on DPS build right here, right? The second part is nicer. Increase the shield absorption by 15%. This applies to your hold E and your tap E. 15% more shield strength? That will be amazing because, as you know, another explanation. Alright, so, as you know, shield strength. Shield strength is a stat that only applies to the user and not your allies. There are very few sources in this game that currently allows you to apply shield strength to your ally. So how shield strength work is if you have the shield strength stat, any barrier on that character will be stronger, not on their allies if their allies have zero shield strength. So it only applies to yourself mostly. There's a saving grace which is the new tenacity set and I'll talk about sets later for Diano. Every single barrier character in the game has an animation where you cannot switch characters while you're casting your barrier. So for Zhongli, it's like this, cannot switch character now. For Noel, cannot switch character now. For Jin Yan. Oh, okay. That was a delay, but yes. You can't really switch the character while casting her barrier, and the only exception is Diona. Let me uh, do the Jin Yan one again. There, cannot switch character now. Jin Yan delay is less than Zhongli and Noel delay, but then Diona is the only one with no delay. It's not too useful because for Favonia and Sacrificial, you have to actually be on the field. You have to actually be on the field to proc the effect. If you swap too early, you don't get the effect of Sacrificial or Favonius, as I can show you the example here. If you were to use um, her E and then swap instantly, you will not be getting the particle from uh, Favonius like that. You have to actually see the hit connects to get the particle from Favonius. And I can do the example on Sacrificial in a bit. For Sacrificial, the same thing applies. If you swap too early before seeing the animation of your ability, you don't gain, you don't get the sacrificial refresh, as you can see. My cooldown are still there. Now then, let me wait the cooldown one more time. And now you can swap, and then the cooldown will be back, yeah? And the other bonus of this constellation is if you uh, use her E, you will now give a barrier to all your allies. This is a co op oriented constellation, which is, it's kinda nice. The barrier is only half the shield strength of her strength, so it's not that bad, but you know. And then her best constellation, I would say. The constellation I use the most. Within her ult, the owner charge shot is reduced by 60%. In my opinion, this is like the most useful constellation on Diano, because obviously you'll be building Diano with the maximum DPS you can ever think of, going for the max damage, going for a quick charge shot like the budget Ganyu she is. So that's her constellation and her talents done. Next, we move on to artifacts. Oh, not artifacts. Should we move on stats? So for stats, Diano base health at level 90 is a very low whopping 9,570 max health. And she's a character that scales off max health. All right. So for my Diona level 90 stats, she has 28,000 health, 50% crit rate, uh, 36% healing bonus, 210% energy recharge, and for some fucking okay. reason, Diona has cryo damage ascension stat. The reasoning for my super high crit rate for Diano is because I'm using the Favonius War Bow. The main comparison is between Sacrificial and Favonius. The reason why I like Favonius more is because I generally run my character not on a full cryo team, and Sacrificial, Sacrificial Bow is generally better if you really are in need of multiple barriers while well, favonius is better for energy recharge because how energy recharge work is if you're the same element of the character generating the particle you get more energy if you're a different element you get like a third of that but neutral element is like a middle ground and favonius bow is neutral energy six particles well six energy so three particles every six seconds which is really nice the cooldown is 6 seconds versus 16 seconds. Now, I don't think I'm free to play enough to have like a refined 1 version, but I can guess, right? Um, at refined 1, it's like half the effect, so 40% chance and 32 cooldown, and 12 second cooldown and 50% chance, I guess. 
I think for the majority of the player base, it's better to stick with Sacrificial Bowl than Favonius. Because Sacrificial Bowl is less expensive, I'd say. Not in terms of the refinement, but more so in terms of artifact investments since... Favonius requires you to have crit rate, health, and energy recharge, while Sacrificial only requires you to have health and energy recharge as your artifact that you aim for. Another thing as well, if you really need to try the 5 star weapon for DPS Diano, go ahead. But, this thing, right? This is the other one. The other, quote unquote, support bow for 5 star. Every time you do damage with your abilities either e or q you generate a stack at four stack you give a buff to your team that lasts 12 seconds which is 200 elemental mastery and 40 percent attack and i know if it's r1 it's like 120 i assume the biggest downside of this bow is you can only gain one stack every two seconds if that line wasn't there the owner can just hold e and full stack it which I know would be so stupid, and, and they put it in for a reason, because we no, they clearly don't want to buff the fuck okay. out of Diano with that bow. It was meant to be for Venti or something. Um, all in all, it takes generally around 2-3 to three seconds to stack the buff with Diano for your team, which is a slight delay which you can uh, care for. But I generally don't care too much about the extra damage, uh, the extra damage buff the weapon provides, since it's way too slow to stack up. The cooldown lines up perfectly with her ability though, because the buff lasts 12 seconds and the cooldown is 20 seconds. The exact same with her ult. So in theory, it does work really well, but just the time it takes to stack it up is not worth it for me. Next is Artifacts. For Artifacts set, I run for No Plus or Please set. The other set people go for is the Maiden set, which increases Diona healing with E and Q. And there are some select uh, smart-ass individuals out there that are actually trying to run Bow Light set on Diano. Well, as I said, Shield Strength is a stat that only works on yourself, so if you use this set, it's not actually making your barrier stronger. It's making your barrier on Diona stronger, only on Diona stronger. There's a saving grace with the tenacity set, right? When you use your elemental skill, when, every time you do damage with your elemental skill, you increase the shield strength all your allies by 30% for 3 seconds. Now, <laughs> now, I don't know if it will snapshot and at the point where you put the barrier up, do you gain the bonus and it prolongs the entire barrier duration or it decays. And it only lasts for that 3 seconds. I will have to test that whenever the set comes out. As I said earlier, for my set, I go for no bless set. I wanted the owner to be like a pseudo attack buffer, similar to Bennett. And she does have perma uptime on the attack buff because her cooldown is 20 seconds. For my stats on the artifacts, I generally aim for crit rate, health, and energy recharge. These are all my pieces right here. And with this current build, from what you've seen earlier, I get a decent amount of health, a good amount of crit rate, and a good amount of healing bonus and energy recharge so that I can use Favonius Warbo. The other option, the other only popular option currently is Maiden Set Diona, right? It's okay for peer support to Diona. How I see, in patch 1.5, when Diona is given up for free, the Tenacity Set will also be introduced, and with the Tenacity Set introduced, you can use the two-piece set bonus for the plus 20% health and a two-piece maiden set to build a pure defensive Diona, which is how you would use her anyway. Right, so team comp for Diano and well, it's like you use Diano like you use Bennett. You pretty much throw them anywhere. They're like the healer support you always want on your team. I guess the holy trinity of like the four star character are like Bennett, Diano, and Xingqiu, right? You put those three on any team and they'll probably fucking work out, right? Yeah. If you need a healer shielder, use Diano. Talent priority for Diano. Go for E first, then Q, ignore auto attack. Unless you're a massive hipster and want to go, you know, level 10 auto attack Diano. So, for Diona energy regeneration, Diona gives you 0 0.8 energy per icy pulse. Uh, up to 5, so that's 4 energy every 15 seconds, yeah? Ideally, you'd rather hold E on the owner always, tapping E for DPS only. <laughs> now this is our healing. 
Below half health, she heals for 7,000. Above half health, she heals for 5,800. And this is the whale from Tarte. We can block probably one hit, and we take 10,000 damage afterwards because Tartek Whale does, does damage twice. If you stay at the very middle, it does damage twice. If you stay at the edge, it does damage once. So my barrier is around 10k. Now, time for the rune guards. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. So around uh, two, no, three waves of missile. But for on the Ona alone, I think she can barely tank one. Yeah, she can barely tank one on her own, but on Jin Yan, she tanks more because your your defense take into account when you're tanking barriers. Roughly, uh, my shield string on the Ona is roughly ten thousand on a Noblesse set. I, as I said, I use her on Noblesse set because I want her to act like a pseudo attack buffer. Because of her infamous duel with Bennett, which uh, I can show in one moment. It really feels unfair whenever I play this team. Wait, look at his head. If he has cryo on again, he does have cryo on. Press E, 58. Look at this. No, he's not. Oh, now he's on cryo. 57. For a normal melt, it should only be around 25k. Nice and simple. Unless it's Bennett because he does everything, that is true. Unless you're Bennett because you do everything. But essentially, the only job here is to generate ER, then put barrier and ult up whenever it's up. So she can uh, increase the team survivability. Where is the last guy? There he is. The Ona barrier block there. That's decently nice. I don't want to use my ult here because I kind of want my ult for the last one. And yeah, that should be done. Yeah. No, I non crit twice. That means I'm a poo poo brain. Alright, next is um Like I went through everything, Biru. So that should be good. Went through E, Q, talent, artifacts, and everything. That should be good. Go through your mic as well? That's kinda hard. Hankets 